Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. Today we're gonna to be building one of my favorite lawn games called Kube, K-U-B-B, or Viking Chess. Now, one of the beauties of this game is in its simplicity. There's only three different pieces. It's super fast to learn. I'm not gonna go over how to play Kube in this video, but I am gonna show you how to build each one of the individual pieces, and you should be able to get it done in one evening. All right, let's get started. All right, so for the three pieces that we're gonna be building, one, you've got the femurs or the batons. There are six of these guys. You've got the kubes, which are the little tiny battle pieces that would sit on either side of the kube uh, game pitch itself. There's 10 of these. And then you've got a single king, which in the billiards world would be like an eight ball. He's the last guy that you need to be uh, knocking down in order to win the game. He's by far the most complicated. Both of these guys are really super simple to cut. You just gotta get the right dimensions and then cut it to the right length and you're pretty much good to go. So all of these pieces have a small amount of variation that you're allowed to have by official Kube rules or USA Kube rules. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below to the official rule set, but the dimensions that I'm sharing with you guys are the ones that I've chosen to use for my particular set. So the first one that we're gonna be working on is the baton or the femur. These guys should be one and three quarters inches around by 11 and three quarters inches long. You can find these supplies at your local hardware store. Check the railing section, check the hardwood section, and you should be able to find some wooden dowels. I did find that the one and three quarters inches was a little bit difficult to find. Um, and the only one that I found at my local home store was a hemlock nice railing, which was like $3 per linear foot. Um, that adds up quite a bit as you're trying to order all the different pieces. So check to see if you can't find any cheap pine dowels and that should get you uh, everything that you need. But to make these, you're literally just gonna take the dowel at the diameter that it's at and then you're gonna just cut it down to length and then I went ahead and sanded down the corners that uh, I had on them so that it was just a little bit smoother and easier to work with. In order to make the cubes, you're gonna be doing a similar thing except you're not gonna be leaving the, the raw dimensions. I started with a four by four and you need to get these guys cut down to two and three quarters by two and three quarters inches and then they're supposed to be 5.9 inches long. I basically just measured it to a hair under six inches but you're going to do exactly the same thing. I chose to leave this as one long piece as I was working with it initially and I planed it down until I could cut all the way through it with my table saw because it was like a half inch that I would have needed to remove in my planer and that's a lot to remove with a planer that I'm only taking like a sixteenth of an inch off with at a time. So I basically used the planer to get nice edges all the way around Around, get it thin enough that I could put it straight onto my table saw and then do a through cut on my table saw all the way across. And then once I had the correct cross-sectional dimensions on this, I could go over to my miter saw and I just sliced it up into all of the right dimensions or, or all of the right lengths and they were good to go. And I also on these ones just broke down at the end, sanding all of the edges so that I broke the corners and everything was nice and smooth. Alrighty, and then lastly, we have the king himself. Now this is the more complicated piece of all of them. The overall dimensions on the outside are three and a quarter by three and a quarter. So I barely had to run this thing through my planer in order to get the right dimensions on that. And in fact, there's still a little bit of bull nose on the edge. And so I basically just sanded that until it looked like everything else. But once you have the proper outside dimensions, then you need to cut the neck and the crown for the king as well. Now, the neck was pretty easy. Basically, I just eyeballed wherever I wanted this to sit. And I've got mine probably two inches down from the top. And I just set my blade to roughly a 30 degree angle. I went ahead and put my first cut all the way around. And basically, you're gonna run it over the top of the table saw, rotate it, rotate it, rotate it, rotate it. And you're gonna get one side of the cut. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip it and you're gonna do the other side and you're gonna be getting those other cuts. And what you wanna do is get them to meet in the middle. Now, if you're really good about measuring your angle, you can predict where you actually need to cut in order to make sure that they meet right at the top. But what I opted to do is basically start my cut and in order for them to meet perfectly at the furthest out spot on my blade, I should be meeting right at the apex. What I mean by that is if you've got your first cut that came through here, so basically you've got this side of the cube, you've got your first cut that came in right here. When I'm doing my alternate cut, if I am too far in, I'm gonna meet up with the top of this cut before I'm actually at the top end of my blade right here. And so what I did is I basically started too close because if you're too far away, you can't do anything else. If you're too far in, you can just keep moving your way out as long as you don't cut too far in up here. But basically just work it up and if I hit the top of the, uh, the apex of that cut before I made it to the center of my blade, I pulled it out, I went a little bit further over and took a little bit more off until I worked my way up there. And then what I did is I marked 
locked down on my miter sled. Actually, it wasn't even really the sled. It was just the miter gauge with a block in it. I basically just marked down where I needed to be in order to hit that every single time on all four sides so you don't need to kind of cheat it in on all four sides. So the last part of the king is to get his crown. Now the crown seems like it's gonna be the most complicated part, but it's not really all that bad. So I left the blade angle at exactly where I had it for the neck, and then I went in about five eighths of an inch from one of the edges, and I found that that makes it pretty symmetrical all the way around as you get these cuts. Now you're only gonna need two cuts when you're doing this, one at that five eighths inch, rotate four times to get all four sides cut, and then you're gonna go in about one and seven eighths inches to match the other side of the cut that you're trying to make, and don't go directly to the one and seven eighths inches because it's gonna depend on all of the minor variations that you have in your king himself when you, got, uh, when you made him. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna kinda sneak up on that again and then basically just barely come into it and if the apex of your blade is not hitting at the very top of that first cut, you wanna move it around until you get there and start on the inside, slowly cutting out more material until you hit it and then once you're even with it, go all the way through. Now, another thing that you wanna be careful of when you're doing this is if you cut your Vs perfectly, you're gonna have material falling out. And so it's possible for that to fall out into your table saw blade itself if you don't have a zero clearance insert for the angle that you're cutting at. So just be careful with that as you have uh, material falling out and onto your table saw. Alrighty, so the last step that we're gonna do, and this is not mandatory, is we're gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of boiled linseed oil. Now, the reason I chose to use boiled linseed oil is because it is not a film finish, it is an oil finish. It will soak into the pieces themselves. It gives it a really beautiful dark hue. Um, and the other thing is it adds a little bit of moisture resistance to it. They're not gonna be out in the rain all the time. I mean, you may store yours out in the rain, but I choose to store mine inside just to give them a little bit more longevity. Um, but when they're outside, they're on the grass, they get spilled on or otherwise, I just wanted them to have a little bit more resistance to it than just having the raw wood itself. Choose to finish it how you want. I chose to use boiled linseed oil. And again, as a note, whenever you're using boiled linseed oil, you need to be careful about the rags because as the oil oxidizes, which is how it cures itself, it does get hot. So you don't wanna leave your rags sitting in a pile because they can catch fire. You can burn your shop down. And when you've got a shop full of wood, that's really dangerous. So I generally just burn everything um, that I worked with right at the top. And I use paper towels to spread it because it's a little bit easier. And I find that I don't get a lot of fuzz in my material when I'm using paper towels. If you have a big issue with that, use a lint-free rag and then you can just burn that or um, look at other disposal methods. There's a lot of them out there, but just be safe with boiled linseed oil. All right, and with that, we finished our set of coop. It really is that easy. It took me one night and then I basically just set, let the boiled linseed oil sit overnight and I was good to go. So this guy could be ready to go for your barbecue tomorrow if you have the four x four and the dowel on hand, it's really honestly super easy. If you have any questions about how to make this, go ahead and leave a question in the comments down below. And if you like the videos that we're putting out here at Northwest Craftsman, I would absolutely love to get a thumbs up on this video and a subscription to the channel. We're putting out all sorts of videos like this. And if you guys have ideas for things you wanna learn, please also put that in the comment section. I get some of my best video ideas from you guys, the viewers. So thank you guys for being involved. I really appreciate it. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for being a part of this community. All right, thank you guys tons. Go have fun making your own set of Kuv and I'll see you next time. Happy woodworking, bye.